So in our classroom forum, we get some really good questions, and this one's a great one. And I thought I'd shoot a video to answer it because it bears a little more discussion than just a text answer. So here's the question. Isn't refrigerant in a liquid and vapor form inside a closed system, be it a cylinder or a refrigeration system? The answer to that is yes. It is in the, both the liquid and vapor form, whether it's in a jug on your truck, a refrigerant jug on your truck, or the refrigerant in an air conditioning or refrigeration system. So yes, the, that's the answer to that question. So the next part of that is, so there is condensing taking place depending on the pressure slash temperature. That is correct. And actually, if it's just in a closed system sitting there or in a cylinder, it is only dependent upon the temperature. So if the jug is in your truck and it's 50 degrees at night, it'll, it's sitting part liquid, part vapor, then during the day it begins to warm up and the, your, the jug begins to warm up from 50 to 60 to 70, there is evaporation taking place. And as the temperature increases, so does the pressure. And to follow that up, there is condensing taking place in that cylinder as well as evaporation, but it depends on what's happening with the temperature. If temperature is increasing and heat is being added, there's evaporation. And as, if temperature is decreasing or heat is being removed, then it will be condensing. So it's in a constant state of change and I, it will either be, be condensing or evaporating. And the, the next part of that question is, in the liquid refrigerant taking up much less space than the refrigerant in the vapor state? We'll, we'll take a look at that here in just a bit. Let's go on to the uh, follow-on question, then we'll get to, the, to some diagrams. And this is the meat of the question here. I can't seem to wrap my head around the idea that the pressure of, of the air conditioning system would increase because of an overcharge in refrigerant. So let's take a look at a cylinder of refrigerant. Now this doesn't happen to have refrigerant in it right now, but we are going to go ahead and put some refrigerant in there. So here is our refrigerant level. This is all liquid down here at the bottom of the cylinder. And then we're going to put this cork back in the top of the cylinder so we have a closed container. This is all refrigerant down here. And let's and up above this line right here, we have vapor. And the vapor has molecules that are bouncing around in all directions. And if we put a pressure gauge on top of this, we would see a whatever pressure that refrigerant was at. And it would correspond to the outdoor temperature. And these, and if the if the temperature remains steady, we have a set level of liquid refrigerant at the bottom and these molecules, vapor molecules, are bouncing around back and forth in here and the pressure remains steady. As the temperature begins to increase outside the cylinder, that heat's transferred to the inside, the molecules begin to move a little bit faster in the refrigerant and more of it evaporates and these molecules bounce around even faster and faster and faster in here and it increases our pressure in relationship to the temperature. And the same thing happens when the temperature decreases these molecules bounce a little bit slower and then they condense back down on the liquid and fall back into our jug. So we just looked at a jug of refrigerant that was partially filled in, in its saturated state and the cork again is back in our jug. Let's put this refrigerant back in at whatever level it is. And this doesn't matter whether this is a jug or an air conditioning system. The um, same thing happens. So we have refrigerant down here at the bottom. So the question was, uh, and, and the confusion is, is how does that pressure increase with an overcharged system? So to do that, let's take a look at what happens in a compressor quickly. So let's pretend that this is our refrigerant container that we just looked at right here in this state. So we got refrigerant down here at the bottom and a lot of open space up on the top. So here's our refrigerant level in our jug and we have whatever pressure it is that we have and and 
the molecules of the refrigerant in the piston are bouncing around and we have 14.696 of uh, PSI of pressure and we're at a steady state just like we are here so let's just add more refrigerant to this jug let's take it up to this level here now we have the same amount of vapor that was down here that has to occupy a smaller amount of space and those molecules begin to bounce around even faster which increases the pressure that's the equivalent of uh, pushing a piston up in this in in this cylinder uh, we have the same amount of vapor here but we have halved the space that that vapor is in so the molecules have less space to bounce around in and and thus they bounce around much much faster so whether we are in a closed bottle, bottle like we just looked at or an air conditioning system when you add refrigerant you reduce the amount of space that the vapor has to bounce around and that increases pressure and that is um, that is one of our gas laws if you if, if you maintain a constant temperature and you reduce the area that the uh, the gas a volume of gas occupies you will increase the pressure so the answer to the question simply is when you add refrigerant to the system it's almost like compressing the refrigerant in a in a compressor because you have reduced the amount of available space for that vapor to occupy. Now, I hope this answers your question. If not, you guys go ahead and post it in the forum and we will continue on with this.